Uh, Fred, I mean, it's been a couple of days since DeMar went off for that 52, but when you look back at it, is there anything that really stands out to you about his performance? No, not really. I mean, it sounds crazy, but like, I don't know. We kind of expect that out of him. You know, we see it so much, and uh, with him shooting a three ball, like, it's only. You know, 15 points away. Like he's been in the high 30s, 40s for the last couple of years, as many times as I can remember. So you just add those extra points. It's like free points for him. You know, if he's shooting a three. Um, for me, it was just like how effortless it looked. I mean, I'm sure he was working hard for it, and um, it's not an easy thing to do, obviously. But like watching him do it so smooth and and effortless. Uh, I was joking with him that like. He didn't really even take, you know, a hard foul like that many times. He got he got knocked down sometimes driving to the rim, but um I just told him I don't I don't think he's scoring fifty two on me. Like I'll probably foul out in the first quarter or something, you know, just but we, we made a lot of jokes about it. It was a lot of, you know, uh fun to watch for sure and obviously getting the win um, was a cherry on top. Can you, can you think of uh, another game, even high school, college, like where you saw something like that. I mean, what was what maybe game you part of? You see anybody score 50, 60, high 40s, anything? Not like that. I I don't <laughs> know if I've seen a guy make 17 shots in the game <laughs> in my life, like in person. Yeah. Doug McDermott had a big game on us in college. I think he was like something like 12 for 14 or 13 for 15 and had 40 points. So that was close, but not like that, that at this level. Um, talking, about, I mean, 17 made shots and. You know, flip shots, jump shots, uh, contested, however you want it. Obviously, you got to the line. Uh, it was pretty amazing. Do you have your name on the town signs in Rockford yet? Or you got to do a bit more? Yeah, I don't know, man. I haven't I haven't been back as much lately, so I don't know. I had a billboard up for a little bit, but uh, I don't know if it's still up or what not. What was it just your picture? Or? Yeah, it was like a tourism thing. Like, um, <laughs> I was a part of a, a tourism um, company back home, so they had put something up for me. That was cool, but I don't know if it's still up. So this Chicago team obviously playing much better basketball. What do you see about them that makes them have this kind of success at this point? Yeah, I think getting Meritage back, um, you know, we know the kind of player he can be. He's been playing at a high level. Chris Dunn is probably the most um, vital piece for them, the way he's been playing. When he's aggressive and, and playing well, they play well. Um, and, and it's just like they got to uh, boost the confidence with Chris Chris playing well and having Meritage back and um, you're getting some of your main pieces back and they're, they're trying to figure it out and they're just scrapping. They already played hard without those guys, so getting those guys back and, uh, you know, they they got a, some type of camaraderie there with, with a lot of guys who maybe were, you know, counted out or, or not playing the way they thought they should be playing and, and they've been playing really well lately. So uh, they've been challenging, you know, every team. I Obviously, they went on that crazy stretch of however many games they won. Um, and like I said, I think again, Meritage back for sure, and him playing at a high level, and at Chris Dunn at the point guard position, playing at a high level, um, makes them tough. There were a few teams this year, Chicago, Indiana, I'm sure I'm missing a few that were like, quote unquote, supposed to be not that good, and yeah. now they're competitive games. It, just in your experience, does it, does it seem like the league's more balanced this year? Like yeah, year I game? mean, that's how it works. It's yeah. peaks and valleys, and it's, it's cyclical where, you know, some teams are up and down depending on who they lose, who they trade. But, like, that's just how anything works. You, you talk about how bad the East is going to be for, you know, so many years or whatever, and then now you look at it, and it's really uh, way more balanced. And, and the teams that are supposed to be bad aren't bad. And um, the teams that were bad have gotten better. So um, it's, it's a tough league each night, no matter what. As players, we understand that. But I think, you know, the general public is getting to see that a little bit more this year.